Today I'm on a mission in the rain to get new fuel lines for the Anmar. They are all uh, old and hard and maybe they're not actually fuel lines at all because they shouldn't be that hard. That's probably part of the problem for my uh, fuel uh, air ingress problem. These areas are great. They're free and they're like super frequent. So we are back with my new fuel line. This stuff feels much better. Maybe this was vacuum line because it got like super, super hard. I actually did have some spare fuel line. This is like pretty good stuff, I think, but it was not not long enough to actually use for, for anything. So that does, the spares don't help if they're not long enough to use. Ah, snap the hose clamp, changing it. Nothing can be easy. Luckily, I think I've got, oh, I know I've got like dozens of those. But made some progress. So I'm gonna, <clears throat> making a quesadilla um, and they've got really good cheese here in uh, the Netherlands so that's that's a plus I think I recommend it for that alone we've had rain for the last uh, few days and the batteries are getting pretty low 12.1 and uh, I can't run the motor right now because I have the fuel lines taken apart oops so I uh, luckily I have this charge where is that oh yeah I've got a battery charger my uh, friend gave me in Norway, so we'll hook this up to the marina. Let's hope we can get the motor running uh, <clears throat> this afternoon once we sort out the, uh, the fuel line issue. So we're waiting to go under this bridge. Opens in 15 minutes. And the captain of this barge, the captain of this barge here, has invited us for a tour. So let's go take a look. Coleman. Hi, Coleman. 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 Okay. She owns the ship. Uh-huh. I'm just helping her by sailing the ship. Uh, where, where have you come from? Uh, uh, the ship comes uh, from Zierikzee. Huh? We are on our way to Enkhuizen. And I, uh, Gabi lives on the ship. Uh. And Janni, she is on the ship as well. Mm. And I, we live on Tessel, Island Tessel. Ah, oh, gotcha. Can we come aboard and take a look on the yeah, 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 okay, video? Okay. Getting up, putting the sail up. That is very, that is uh, an, a nice uh, old fashioned instrument. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say it's, uh, it's quite inventive for the time in, in which it was functional. Okay. Fascinating. Uh, and here you see one of the provider of the winds. He's very famous on old-fashioned uh, sailing vessels. Okay. Here you have the anchor winch. Uh huh. And you have the anchor chain. Mm hmm But also a cable to lower down the mast. Oh, you can drop the mast. Yeah, yeah, you can lower the mast. Oh. Don't, don't drop it down. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you can see some poles here. Mm hmm The grape poles. They are put together in an A-frame. Okay. And they are set to that side and to that side, and then as an A to the oh, okay. A. And then they, and then you can uh, get down the mast. Afterwards. You can get it back up again. With the A-frame, uh, getting the right angle when the mast comes uh, to the deck. Okay. You understand that? Yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah, like a gin pole. Okay. Yeah. And how, how old did you say the, the boat was? The ship is from 1891. Holy smokes, wow. Uh -huh. And you said it was a converted cargo yeah, vessel back then? Uh, it is built as a cargo vessel mm -hmm. and it's called a clipper. Okay. And they have, uh, the front of the ship is smooth and sharp mm -hmm. for the speed. Right, okay. Yeah. And you have for leeward, you have these leeward? Yeah, the leeward. The drop down? The wind is putting the ship aside as well, but we want to go forward. Okay. So we uh, reduce the movement to the side with the leeward. Uh -huh. So we go more for forward. Gotcha. And it's not a plain plank, but there's also uh, a well formed profile in it. Uh -huh. where the ship goes more to the forward than you oh like a lifting expect. foil gotcha yeah, uh, yeah. really high tech okay cool yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And that they knew already in the ancient days. Eh? They were doing that back then, wow. And what they also they had in the ancient days mm -hmm. was that they knew on site how to build a ship and how to make the form of the aft uh -huh. so smooth that the water would uh, leave the ship easily in uh, laminar currents. Uh, okay, patterns. yeah. And nowadays they have their experiments in, uh, in uh, hydro uh, dynamic uh, yeah, simulations uh, and stuff. Bath and, and uh, major experiments and sen sensors. Mm -hmm. But in a uh, hundred years ago, they could, could do without it with better results. I can assure. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm very impressed by what they, what our ancestors, what they achieved with the, with simple means. Sure, sure. I used to say that uh, 100 years ago they did everything with nothing and now we do nothing with everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, Very true. Yeah. All right, then we and nice soft and warm materials. Yeah. So please come down. Very uh, beautiful is this part that uh, in here they can, uh, could separate the, the cargo uh, room in several parts uh, okay. yeah. and this is left over a bit and also made the deck a bit uh, stronger uh, gotcha, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. and you want to have a look at the shower at the Please? cabins as well? Yeah? of course Can you have, can you have uh, gas for charging? Yeah, we can have uh, just uh, uh, gas. Mm -hmm. And the main things we do, we, uh, we try to give the guest the uh, uh, experience of sailing uh, old-fashioned vessels. And that way, when you use sails mm -hmm. and the wind to, for proceeding and the water to, 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 to stay afloat, that's how you can uh, deal with nature in, in a proper way and uh, you when you sail you feel the wind yeah and you know and you learn how to deal with it and if you have a good sailing vessel the, the uh, surface of your front sail is in uh, balance with the surface of your aft sails and you don't need your rudder at all if you put right. your sheets well right. Is the, what is the steering here? Is it hydraulic or just... Uh, uh, I'm afraid it's uh, hydraulic. Yeah. hydraulic yeah. I'm very fond of, uh, we call it an Engels Stuurwerk. There okay. are uh, two irons with uh, schroefdraad. Uh, we'll thread. Uh, two uh, yeah, irons with thread. Okay. And the one is uh, clockwise thread and the, the other uh, counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. And when you turn the wheel, you turn both pieces of thread okay. and in between there is some point of iron connected to both threads and one uh, end is going forward and the other going backward oh. when you turn the wheel to the same way uh -huh. and that's why uh, how you uh, control your uh, rudder okay you see it for you not, i don't think i've seen that one yet uh, but maybe i will uh, when I'm here. i think we use a drawing but you okay. can well, I can make a drawing later and give it to you in Durham. Okay, sounds yeah? good. Yeah. Engels Stuurwerk. And, that's, and that way, mm -hmm. uh, as well as with a helm, mm -hmm. you have direct contact with the rudder. Yeah, that's good. And that's very convenient when you sail the ship. What, what does this boat like to sail? Uh, what does the boat like to sail? Does it like... Um, uh, oh, character? it's, it's, it's a, a comfort. It's comfort, yeah. And you can go pretty mm -hmm. fast. Okay. Very cool. Uh, thanks, yeah, for, thanks for showing us. Very neat. Yeah. It's uh, my pleasure. Be you welcome. Check on the time. Yeah? I yeah, think we go to, 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 to the bridge. <laughs> Check out. Let's no. see our guest. I'll just keep on filming. Okay. We're going to also in the bedankt for the blik. Okay, yeah. We'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. Okay. Bye. Okay. We had to rush all of a sudden because if we missed the bridge opening, we would have to wait another hour red green light so that means we're first on this side is first and the other ah. side is still got red so we should prepare how did i know that instead of filming we should prepare i right. repeat we should prepare <laughs> we have hail
wind is really picking up here. We were motoring underneath the bridge and then uh, it started making a weird sound. I don't think that we're getting a lot of water through. Maybe some seaweed uh, blocked the, uh, the inlet. So now we are sailing and our harbor is right there. So we'll just drop the sails at the last minute and then motor the rest of the way real quick. Turn off. Fortunately, my host was real familiar with this channel and we were able to attack up right up into the harbor. Problem sitting on the floor here. The, uh, the water pump belt just snapped. Uh, we got safely to the dock here. Just used the motor for a couple minutes to get it all the rest of the way in after we sailed in. So no problem there. And it seems like it's not too hot. I love that fish. Once again, back at our favorite Amsterdam yacht service. Trying to get a belt for the water pump. Well, I've biked all over town and I found the belts really expensive. Usually they're like, I don't know, $3 or something, but they were, for two belts, it was 31, 32 euros. Thanks. Uh, but I, I got a second one, you know, just to have a spare. I thought I had a spare in the boat, but I'm not sure where it went. I got some uh, coolant antifreeze stuff. I'm going, my goals are I'm back on the boat, and my goal is today to first got to change the uh, water pump belt, and then I'll winterize the, the motor. So I'll, I'll pump this through the salt water circuit, drain the water tanks, color fire, and then take off the sails and ropes, and yeah, get the boat ready for winter and packed up. It's kind of a hack, but let's see if that works. I'm gonna add some of the uh, sea foam into the big fuel tank too, just to maybe kind of help stabilize the fuel a little bit. Unfortunately, I don't have any of that bio side stuff. I don't know if that helps any, but I know that it tends to grow some black, nasty stuff. It tends to grow black stuff in the bottom of the tank if I it for too long. Now I'll pull the jib down. I think I might just leave I'm gonna leave the mainsail mainsail on there. Had the sails all dry and ready to put away, and then this tip fell in the water. So bummed out. <sighs> At least it's sunny for a little bit. Hopefully it'll dry out again. I'm just cleaning up the cockpit under the grate. These drains were like completely clogged up. And we'll also empty out our freshwater tank. So you don't want it to freeze and crack. Giving the, uh, the winches a good clean and put some oil on the, uh, the gears and the paws. And then uh, I put some, uh, some grease on the, just a little bit on the bearings. It's always one that's sturdier than the other. That one's really bad. Whoa. I took a break from the boat work and then I spent a couple of days visiting the museums in Amsterdam. There's a ton of them. We also have some pickled herring. This is the Dutch version of pickle herring. We got onions and pickles from our friend here. We're going. It smells good with the onions and the pickles.
pretty good. A little salty. I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so this is different. Isn't it? it is different. Hmm. <clears throat> so what will you rate it? Hmm. Compared to the other this, herrings. Yeah. I liked it with like the, the kind of with the mustard and the the bread. Is that how we had it last time? Yes. This is good too. I'd say up there with that, yeah. Let me try some. Okay. How do they have pickled herring in Norway? I guess the same way the Swedes does it. Uh -huh. yeah. Are you all in one bite? Mm-hmm. That's a good way to do it. What do you think? Hmm. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Okay. Today we have a new package for the pickled herring. This is by Vercro. I don't really understand why it is, but we'll figure it out together. <clears throat> so comes with a nice, nice cylinder with the wire. Hopefully things will become clear. There we go. Got some more wires. So far, I almost got a hundred percent, you know. Wow. That's a lot of wire. It's still a mystery. Exactly what <laughs> what? <it is. laughs> oh, it's got a GPS apparently. It's got a battery. It's got a bilge pump. I don't know. Oh. A, a rectangle. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm getting this. Here you have two rectangles. This one with a wire, and that connects to, well, that doesn't connect. But yeah, you got your classic two rectangles in a circle. <laughs> and you just put this on your boat, and I don't see the bilge pump, but it will. It will beat it. Yeah. I, got, I don't know how I've done without this. <laughs> For so For long. So long. Okay, so I'm figuring this out now. It's pretty cool. You down once you download their app, it makes a lot of sense. It's a a boat monitor, um, basically an anchor alarm, but it also has some other sensors, so you can so you can see what's going on on your boat while you're while you're not there. And the sensors are all wireless to each other. They have a little battery in them, and you just pair them to your phone. And then there's like a SIM card, and it will you know monitor your boat while you're away. The app was pretty easy to set up, so tomorrow I'm going to go back to my boat and I'll try to so install I think it. This is the GPS. This one is a bilge or a, a water sensor to see if the bilge is full. And this one is a temperature sensor. This, uh, These wires monitor the battery. Oh, these are the fuses. And this one monitors if the bilge pump is on. The, the anchor alarm seems that would be pretty useful because I've had my boat float away from me while I left it. And uh, lots of people, you know, I think were, get nervous to leave their boat um, at anchor and go away for a long time. And uh, it's something you kind of just have to just accept, you know, that you have that the rest of your boat could float away. Uh, but at least with this, you get a little heads up, you know. Um, and if there's a cell signal, it might be able to tell you where your boat is. Uh, I had my boat once float away in the Keys. Uh, fortunately, it didn't go away. It just went into a dock, and uh, luckily some people helped the fenders out so it didn't get smashed up because there was a pretty bad squall. And then another time in, um, uh, well, I was asleep on the boat, and everybody else had left, and I was going to leave with them, but I, I was kind of hung over, so I stayed on the boat. And uh, then I woke up, and the boat had floated away, and uh, if I wasn't on the boat, you know, no, it, uh, 
I don't know, the boat could have like floated off and we would have been able to find it. So this could be pretty useful, you know, and there was cell signal in both those cases, I think, or maybe not in the dry tree triggers, I'm not sure. So it, you're limited by the cell signal. And also it only works in uh, Europe and uh, the UK right now. And so that's like a limitation too. So I won't be able to use it once I go back across the Atlantic again. But we'll, I'll experiment with it, you know, it didn't cost me anything. You see how it works. The installation, again, that was really intimidating me, but actually um, some of these wires I don't need because it's for monitoring two batteries and I only have one, so that eliminates one. So it's only uh, attached two wires to the battery and then one to the bilge, uh, just if I want to see if that's running. And that's, that should be all, all it needs, I guess. Let's give it a try. So it's getting a little crowded in here. It looks like we've got one spot left. I don't really have much room for a second fuse box. I'm gonna have to start doubling up soon. Uh, I really hate adding electronics. I just snipped them and then squashed them so maybe that'll work. So we are we're hooked up here and then I, I labeled it there. I, I kind of wedged the puck back there and there's a heck of a lot more wires. I'll probably have to I'll probably cut these shorter. But for now, we'll see if it works. I'll just, I'll just shove them up here. Okay, let's let's not look at that anymore. So this guy goes in the bilge. Unfortunately, they don't really have a way to mount it except for with this sticky tape. I don't, I don't doubt it will stick uh, too well down here. But maybe I can kind of wedge it in between the wires and also use the tape. And then this guy goes uh, just a bunch above the bilge pump. Yeah, so that sticky stuff wouldn't stick to this. Uh, so I just I just tied the cable in a knot there, so that looks pretty good. And then I stuck the sensor just right above the bilge pump, so that's my secondary bilge pump. So if this sensor goes off, that means both bilge pumps have failed or this thing just fell off into the water. So I turn on the app and I can see see my battery voltage. That's pretty cool. So this last sensor, I tried to fit it on the door, but it doesn't look like it's really gonna be an easy way to mount it. Uh, but it does have a temperature sensor, so I'll just, I guess I'll just put it in the fridge so I know how cold my fridge is. So it's kind of cool. I can monitor the boat. I can see the, while I'm gone, cause I'm gonna leave it for the winter. And then I'll be back next spring. I can see the battery voltage and uh, if um, the bilge pumps fail, I suppose. And then also if the boat, I don't know, if someone tries to steal it, I can see where it is. So that's pretty neat. Pickles packed up for winter. Good. And now they know the pickled herring was here. Look at that windmill. After the boat was all winterized, I took my bike on an adventure to find as many windmills as possible. And there's a lot of them here. I also found another one of these pump tracks. I think they're really fun and 
the Brompton bike does pretty good on the pump rack too. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we'll be in Florida cleaning up after the hurricane. And also I got a free catamaran, so we'll have some more uh, dinghy sailing adventures in the, I think the Everglades and the Keys this year. I'll see you guys then.